I want to move on to other news of the day as well. Uh, you heard the reporting from Jim Acosta at the top of the show, so let me bring in two lawyers sitting next to me, Ellie Honig, former federal prosecutor in the Southern District of New York and former assistant attorney general for the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice, and Bob Bianchi, the former head prosecutor and chief law enforcement uh, office of Morris County, New Jersey. So, gentlemen, um, on to what Jim was reporting about some... Let me read this quote to you, which I think sums up a lot of the feeling in the White House. This is from the Washington Post today. Uh, Winter is coming. Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, Winter is coming. Assuming Democrats win the House, which we all believe is a very strong likelihood, the White House will be under siege. But it's like tumbleweeds rolling down the halls over there. Nobody's prepared for war, right? So you have this potential war of two fronts. Uh, impeachment proceedings, potentially, and Democratic-controlled House committees, subpoenas, wrangling with the Hill. How do you prepare for an impeachment proceedings? Yeah, this is, uh, as Jim Acosta said earlier, this, this is an epic storm that's brewing around, around the president. You have, you have investigations coming from the federal level, Mueller and Southern District, state level AG, county level DA. You have the possibility of impeachment. You have the possibility of endless subpoenas and investigations if the House flips. And what you need is a real, serious, seasoned D.C. lawyer. There is a real paucity of that in the White House right now. Arguably, Emmett Flood is the only person who meets that. Don McGahn did, but he got thrown out because, he, or, well, or pushed out, <laughs> however you want to phrase it. After the Brett Kavanaugh hearing, so since um, Trump over uh, Twitter, that right. this is a good guy. Just yeah. showing the door right. gently uh, because he committed the two great sins of Trump world. He said no to the president and he, he talked. And if you, you know, serious lawyers sometimes have to say no. And if you're a client, Trump, who won't take no, you're never going to get that serious D.C. Uh, attorney that you need to get through this. You mentioned the paucity of the, the, the legal team uh, alone. I was reading a quote from Jack Quinn, who was a former White House counsel under former President Bill Clinton, said, uh, like, on a good day, they had as many as 60 lawyers, but often had, you know, in the range of 40. I mean, what kind of lawyers? He mentioned a good D.C. lawyer. What kind of lawyers do you need to prepare for this kind of thing? Yeah, I ran an agency of two, 300 people. I had 37 attorneys. I tried to get the very best. They may have had different viewpoints, but we got into a room and we battled it out. We came to a decision. We moved forward. What you have is kind of what's being alluded to. You have a client who's not listening, who goes to Twitter, who's making statements that are against his interests. He's got multiple jurisdictions coming at him. And mark my words, Brooke, I've been saying it for months, and I'm glad some people are coming around to it. Watch the state prosecutors in this case. They're going to come around like a whipsaw because Mueller is not stupid because of the pardon power that the president has, that he is not enlisting either the attorney general's office or the local prosecutor's offices with similar crimes that could be uh, prosecuted on the state level to bypass the president's pardon power. So to the point. Like, give me an example. Well, for example, uh, look at what happened very interesting with Michael Cohn. He pleads guilty to certain things. And the next thing he's getting subpoenas for tax problems that he may have had for not paying his state taxes. I'm not saying that case is going to go anywhere. But with every joint investigation that I led with the federal government, government. We had state crimes that could be charged with and federal crimes. And the carrot always was, we'll let you go if you plead guilty to the federal crimes. But in the event something gets tricky with those federal crimes, here we are on the state side ready to prosecute. And I don't think that's being spoken about. It implicates Manafort. It implicates Cohen. It implicates Weisselberg or anyone else who may be thinking, oh, I got the president in my pocket. Weisselberg has immunity, remember, um, uh, as does Pecker, which we'll get to in just a second. But so what do you think would give the White House uh, legal team maybe more of a headache? You know, one would think, oh, my gosh, the idea, the I word. That's what Trump says. He doesn't want to say impeachment, the I word, the potential proceedings there, or the idea of wrangling with House committees, Democratic controlled House committees? I think I think the, the potential of nonstop investigations and subpoenas will be yeah, more of a headache. You do. But I think there's a more lethal threat coming from the okay, prosecution yeah. side, um, from Mueller, from the Southern District, from the two state guys here. Yeah. Uh, with, I was federal too, but from the possibility of the states as an escape hatch, if in fact uh, the, the president does do extreme things such as pardons or firings. And, and one thing I think the president will be well advised to do, which he has not done so far, is to take a page out of what Bill Clinton did back in the 90s. He built, a, he, he, no pun intended, he put a wall uh, between the Whitewater defense and his day-to-day -day job as a president. He said, these are my lawyers. He had the best lawyers in the country. He said, they're going to handle the special counsel, the independent counsel mm -hmm. at the time, Ken Starr, and I'm just going to be president every mm -hmm. day, and I'm not going to distract myself with this. And here we see our president now. Which is now what this White House... Up. 
should be doing. Yeah, that's what I would advise. But you see the president doing the opposite. He's waking up in the middle of the night, sending out tweets. You have clients like this that you give them the sound advice about remain silent, don't say anything. That protects the innocent as well as the guilty. And these feds and state attorneys are looking at every single tweet, specifically as it relates to obstruction, and trying to make the case something different. It may not even be to protect the president. It could be to protect Don Jr. It could be to protect Kushner. It could just simply be because he doesn't want the investigation to go any longer. And every day he does it, he's putting him and his crew in jeopardy, and he's just not listening to the lawyers that are saying, keep your mouth shut. Everybody watching the outcome of November 6th, oh so closely and carefully. Um, Gentlemen, thank you so much for that.